This is a continuation of uh, the last two videos that we did. We're still working with equations that use quadratic methods to solve. So we're going to start off with rational exponents, an equation that has rational exponents. Uh, I want you to notice that this exponent for this one, one third, is half of the exponent for here. So we can use quadratic methods just like when we had x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 4 equals 0. We said because the exponent of 2 is half of the exponent of 4, it's a trinomial. It looks like a quad quadratic. So we're going to use quadratic methods to solve this as well. So whenever I have some weird exponents like to powers of 4 or to rational um, like a rational exponent, I hope that I can use the zero product property when solving. So for this one, let's see if we have factors of negative four that add to negative three. And I think we do. I think negative four and positive one add to negative three. So when I factor this, my middle term, remember, goes into my factors. So I get an x to the one-third minus four times x to the one-third plus one, and that equals zero. So remember, we just set our factors once we factored, and everything's, all of our factors are prime. We just set our factors equal to zero and solve. So I'm gonna take my two factors, I'm gonna set them equal to zero. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So I get x to the 1 third equals 4. Um, so now the question is, how do we get rid of this 1 third? Well, we learned previously that x to the 1 third means the cube root of x. What would you do to both sides of this equation to solve? Well, I would cube it to get rid of the cube root. So I'm going to cube both sides and I get x equals 64. All right, so what do we get for the other one? Well, we're going to subtract the one from both sides. So x to the 1 third is negative 1. So I'm going to change this into a cube root. And then I'm going to cube both sides to get rid of my cube root. So cubing negative 1 means I'm multiplying it 3 times. So I get, I get a positive 1 times a negative 1. So that's going to be a negative 1 still. So I get two answers for this equation. All right, so let's do this one. This is where I'm going to use u substitution. This is something I had mentioned in the previous, like two videos ago, but we didn't use it. So u substitution. So I'll show you why that makes it easier. Okay, so again, we're always going to be looking, is the exponent on this term half of the exponent on this term? Yes. Are these two terms exactly equal? Yeah, they are. So we can use quadratic methods. But in this case, we don't have just a single term base. We have a binomial that's a base. So I'm going to say u equals 2x minus 4. And so when I substitute it in, I get something that looks much easier to solve. So now I'm going to be looking for factors of 15, let's hope that we can factor this, that add to negative 8. Do they exist? Negative 5, negative 3. I believe they do. So now this is going to be u minus 5 times u minus 3 equals 0. But I'm not, I was not asked to solve for u. This equation is asking me to solve for x. So this is where I'm going to substitute u back in, so I get 2x minus 4 minus 5, 2x minus 4 minus 3 equals 0, 
and I'm going to combine my like terms so I get 2x minus 9 times 2x minus 7 equals 0. So now I'm going to set both of my factors equal to 0 and solve. So I add the 9, I get 2x equals 9, and then I divide by 2. So I get x equals 9 halves. Here I'm going to add my 7. So I get 2x equals 7, and then I'll divide by 2. So I get x equals 7 halves. Now use substitution makes your life a lot easier. Okay, so here we go again. The exponent here is 1. The exponent here is half the exponent here. And my bases are the same, so I'm going to use u substitution, say x, u equals x minus 6. And rewrite this in terms of u. And then I'm going to hope that it factors, right? I'm going to look for factors of 12 that add to negative 8. I think that's negative 6 and negative 2. So that works out really nice. So this is u minus 6 and u minus 2. And then I'm going to plug my u back into both of my factors. So I get x minus 6 minus 6. x minus 6 minus 2 equals 0. So I get x minus 12 x minus 8 equals 0. So now I'm going to set both of my factors equal to 0 and solve. So I get, I add 12 to both sides. I get x equals 12. I add 8 to both sides. I get x equals 8. All right, so use substitution, you can see it makes life a lot easier. Okay, last one for u substitution. Again, that exponent is half of this one. My bases are exactly the same. So I'm going to say u equals 2x minus 2. So this is u squared minus 6u equals negative 5. But what do I know about quadratics? I really need to move that negative 5 to the other side, so I'm going to add it to both sides. So I get u squared minus 6u plus 5 equals 0. I'm going to look for my factors that, that multiply to, uh, to 5 and add to negative 6. I know that's negative 5 and 1. So I factor u minus 5, u minus 1. And now this is where I substitute u back in. I get 2x minus 2 minus 5, 2x minus 2 minus 1. So when I combine my like terms and my factors, I get 2x minus 7, 2x minus 3. I set both of my factors equal to 0 and solve. So I'm going to add that 7 and then divide by 2. x is 7 halves here. I'm going to add my 3. And then I'm going to divide by 2. Final answer. OK. These problems you did way back in chapter 6 again. So we're going to factor this by grouping. It has one, two, three, four terms. I typically like my polynomials in standard form, so I put them in order. But you don't have to when you group. Um, sometimes it's easier just to leave them out of order. So I'm going to group the first two, and I'm going to take out an x squared. So I get an x plus 1. And then I'm going to group the second two, and I'm going to take out a positive 5, and I get an x plus 1. And so each of these has an x plus 1. 
So I get an x plus 1. When I take that x plus 1 out of each of those, I'm left with x squared plus 5 equals 0. They're all prime. This is not, this is the sum of something. It's not a square, so I can't factor that. So I'm going to set each of my factors equal to 0 to solve. The second factor has an exponent of 2, so I'll get two answers there. So for the first one, I'm just going to subtract 1 from both sides, and I have a nice answer. For the second one, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides, and now I have to take the square root of both sides. And don't forget your plus or minus, or you will not get two answers. And when you're finished, remember the square root of a negative number is imaginary. I take my i out. 5 is prime, it doesn't factor anymore. So I get two answers here, positive i radical 5 and negative i radical 5, and then I get negative 1, which means I have all the answers I need, the three answers that they tell me I should have. And this is our last example here. Again, I'm just going to put these in order, and I'm going to use the same strategy, factor by grouping. Okay, so I'm going to group the first two terms and take out an x squared, so I get an x minus 3. And then I'm going to take the second two terms and factor out a positive 1. Remember, you can always factor something out, whether it's a positive 1 or a negative 1. So I notice these are the same, so I'm going to factor the x minus 3 out. And when I do, I get x squared plus 1. So now I notice all my factors are prime. They do not factor anymore, so I'm going to set them equal to 0. So I'm going to add 3 here, so I get x equals 3. So here I'm going to get two answers. So beware, you should get two answers. x squared equals negative 1. And now I'm going to use my square root property, so don't forget the plus or minus. x equals, what's the square root of negative 1? i. So I have a positive i and a negative i, that's two answers, and a 3. So that's three answers, and I was supposed to get three answers. Okay, so that's how you should do your, your homework worksheet.